What is human nature? Are we good in our essence or are we evil? What is the truth? What is that underlying mechanism that makes us who we are? Stay tuned to find out. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to Choosing to Connect, the place to love your life by living from love. My name is Tal. I'm a social psychologist and spiritual teacher. And today we're going to be talking about human nature. Now, why is this important to even know or understand? First, on our personal level, because we all want to know ourselves, to understand what it is that motivates us. Because the more we can see ourselves clearly, the more we'll know how to make ourselves happy, how to heal our pain, our uh, our frustrations, how to make ourselves more successful, etc. And also, the more we can see our internal mechanisms as individuals, the more we'll know how to create relationships that work and ultimately societies that work and a world that works. Because right now, as we can see, there isn't enough knowledge and obviously we're not making this world work so well. So let's talk about that a little bit. As an academic, as a psychologist, I was always searching for a better understanding of myself and others and how we work as human beings. What are those underlying mechanisms? Now, sure, there are lots of different theories about lots of different aspects of who we are, but I never found one coherent model of human nature I could look at and say, okay, that is a human being. That is what describes the human mechanism clearly and concisely. There was no such thing. Some of the research says that we are wired to connect, that we are social species, that we are collaborative by nature, that we enjoy giving and so on. And then other research will tell you that we're not. We are self-focused. We have self-interest. Whatever we do, we do because we're selfish. So which is the truth? This is what I wanted to find out. And since I didn't find the answers in science for many things that I was asking, I started delving into the wisdom of sages, into ancient wisdom, into spiritual science of people who did research reality, but they did this by expanding their own awareness and perception. And this is actually something that we do need in order to see ourselves clearly. Because while we as human beings can easily research and analyze what happens on the lower levels of nature, physics, biology, right? The animal world. We can see what happens there quite clearly. It's much harder for us to see ourselves with that objectivity, which is why psychology is not really a very, very precise science. However, spiritual scientists are those people who are able to rise to a higher level of perception into unity consciousness and so they were able to see themselves objectively from the outside how this is done this is a whole other story but the point is that they were able to create a model of human nature that is much more accurate so let's talk about what i discovered and what they tell us so what they explain is that human beings are inherently selfish. Yes, that is our basic human nature. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not something that we need to hide or like not want to see. We want to see that. We want to see it because the more we can see it, the more we can understand why the world looks the way it is, why it's so broken, why it's so conflicted, why we're not able to solve our increasing global challenges. And also we will know what to do in order to change ourselves, transform ourselves. Because our basic default egoistic nature is not the end of the story. There is a process of evolution that is taking place. And as our sages say, we are meant to realize the futility of trying to be happy and successful within our ego and therefore evolve and rise and transform into higher states of being, higher self, higher level of consciousness, where we will finally find the true fulfillment, the true success, the true love and happiness that we were always seeking. So that is the process. Now let's go back and talk about that basic nature of ours and why it's really that bad. So when we realize that we are completely and 100% completely focused on ourselves. What we'll see is that there is this mechanism that is constantly making me think of what is in things for me, what is in it for me, right? What's good for me. And I'll constantly focus on what I can gain, what I can pull into my experience that will make me feel better make me more happy or successful or whatever. And I'm always trying to repel anything that is sensed by me to be not so good for me, not so beneficial, even hurtful or painful. I wanna push 
any of that awake. Now, why is that bad? That sounds like survival mode, right? A survival instinct, which is true. However, what that means is that what I can experience from this great reality outside of me is a very small percentage of information because I'm always filtering like 99% of the information up in accordance to what is relevant to myself, my small self. And since I'm just one little part, one little cell in this huge body of humanity, that means that what's relevant for me is just a small percentage of what's really out there. So that is one thing that is negative about our nature. It just keeps us very limited. And it's actually what keeps us perceiving this 3D material reality. If we were able to rise above this mechanism, we would discover a much greater, expansive, more um, harmonious reality, which we are supposed to discover. And we'll talk much more about that in the future. Now, another bad thing about the ego is that it has this tendency, unlike what animals do, where they just, you know, they're in a race for survival, but they don't have what humans have. What the human ego has is something very unique, which is that uh, desire to be more than. I want to be more than others. Even if it's in a very specific way, I'll always want to feel that there's something about me that is better than others or more than others. And this is something that really makes us miserable because what happens is we're always busy comparing and trying to see what do other people have? And then we judge what we have in comparison to that. It's all relative. So then I could have objectively everything I want, but if somebody has more than me, immediately that will make what I have seem less and not good enough. And so we can never be happy within this egoistic mechanism that's constantly comparing and never truly happy with, with what we have as long as somebody has something we don't. And since we're all different, we have different life experiences, different abilities, different purposes, then we're always going to be different in what we have and in our abilities and our talents and so on. And while we stay within our egoistic prism, it is a prison. It's not just a prism, it, it's a prison. And we see this when we go online on social media, we see how this comparison really makes us even depressed. There's research about that. People get depressed because they go online and they see other people's perfect lives making them depressed. So for all these reasons, um, the ego is not a good place to be. Again, we already know the ego will also turn against itself and criticize itself um, again because of this self-focus that's becoming more and more and more distorted as we evolve. These days we see a lot of mental health problems that come from a negative attitude towards the self. And again, we could say, see, that is proof that I'm not constantly out for myself because I'm very critical towards myself and I'm very hateful towards myself. But my friend, that is no proof at all. It only proves that your focus is still on the self. And by the way, if we saw that clearly, we would see that more psychological work, more self-help, more self-care, all these things, although they might make us feel a little better, are not really curing the problem at the root because the real cure to this problem of the ego is to stop focusing on the self and to start putting our focus outside of ourselves. When we do that, when you start thinking about what others need, what others should have in order for them to evolve, in order for them to grow, for them to be happy, that's when you become free. And I know I can suddenly breathe because this is like an expansive state. I'm not constantly worried about myself and being afraid of what I will have or not have. I'm free of myself, my self-concern, my worries, my anxieties, my neurosis. I'm free of all of that. And I am open to perceive much more of what is out there in order for me to serve as a channel of goodness, of, of positivity for others. And this is really what our sages describe as our higher potential, our higher self. This is the place where we want to go. Now, if we just take a second to look at how this will play out in our more global environments and societies, we can fully understand why this is the cure and this is the answer. Because in our interconnected, globalized societies where we're experiencing crises that are really happening just to prove to us how interconnected we are and how opposite we are to this interconnectedness with our self-interest and uh, desire for power and gain at the expense of others, if we really see that, then 
we'll see that curing this mentality of me first, the mentality where countries are fighting each other over resources and over power, if we can cure that, then we can finally build societies in a world that works. So all these crises that we see, all the problems, the economic problems, education, health, environment, if we only fix one thing, the human ego, they will all be solved. If we can match the interconnectedness of our world and nature and humanity with our internal shift towards that kind of mutual care, mutual consideration and mutual connection, then this match between our internal and external state is what will create health, harmony, abundance, and really the security that we need in our times. Because, hey, we're facing a lot of problems right now and we really need change. We really need to shift. So if you've been feeling um, very worried, very concerned about where the world is going, about what is happening in the world right now, then know this, you as a human being, as a part of this whole called humanity, have a very big power to influence what happens. Because when you shift and because you're interconnected to everybody else, when you make a shift towards greater focus on others, on the whole, on the benefit of the whole, when you make this internal shift within you, mm -hmm. you, like a cogwheel in a system, are beginning to turn the other cogwheels in that correct direction. And we all want to be doing this together because we are completely interconnected, like cogwheels in a machine. And it's not like a mechanical, you know, old fashioned machine. It's a beautiful, interconnected, intricate machine that is really leading us to our higher states of being of bliss and, and bounty and abundance and love. And so we should be very, very hopeful, but we should also learn to see our human nature, our egoism, and that we really do need to start being aware of it and learning how to shift and transition and transform it. So that's what I'm here for. Thank you for making it to the end of this video and taking the time to hear about this very important transition that we all need to make, learning about human nature and why this is just our basic default state that's really only meant to help us shift out of it, jump out of it, transform and discover new levels of being, new realities and things that we always dreamed of but never thought were possible. They're possible and they're going to happen. The more we can do this consciously, the easier and more smoothly it will go. So send me questions, comments, anything that can help all of us make this transition together more easily. Uh, if you have any questions or things you felt were unclear, please let me know. Subscribe to the channel to hear about new videos that come out and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.